This is the story of how I tried to cure my chronic insomnia without taking any sleep meds and instead making small changes across nearly every facet of my life. For context, over the past two and a half years, I've struggled with what's called maintenance insomnia. Maintenance insomnia is the inability to stay asleep and trouble falling back asleep after waking up. For me, what this usually meant was going to bed before midnight and then waking up between 4 and 5 a.m. only to toss and turn the rest of the night until my alarm finally goes at 7.30. The consequences of constantly losing sleep first showed up in the form of a reduced memory. I would go out to dinner with some friends and a month later have to be reminded that that night even happened. As my sleep problems continued, I became disengaged from my work, struggling to motivate myself, and every morning I continued to wake up and become more and more stressed that my sleep problems were going to continue hurting my life. So this year, I made the decision that I need to do what's ever in my power to get my sleep back to where it used to be, or at the very least, more than six hours a night. Here's what I did. At the start of the new year, I began doing research on the various kinds of sleep disorders, circadian rhythms, and the many barriers that prevent us from falling and staying asleep. And the data wasn't encouraging. With a lot of the research just laying out all of the long-term dangers I could face if I continued getting four to six hours a night. But while doing this research, I also came across a book titled Sleep, The Myth of Eight Hours and the Power of Naps which from the title seemed to contradict everything else I had read. So I read it cover to cover and what I found was a book that seemed to be speaking directly to the worry I felt over constantly not getting enough sleep. And worry is the biggest disruptor. Worrying that there's only so many, oh, there's only eight hours left before I go do it again. What am I gonna do? I need to go to sleep, take sleeping tablets, do this, do that. This is Nick Little Hills, a sports sleep coach and author of Sleep. I set up a Skype call with Nick after reading his book to talk about how we approach sleep amidst the busyness of modern living. You chop your 24 hours up into 90 minute cycles because in a clinical environment, that's how you benchmark sleep cycles. So I only think of 35 cycles in seven days. So five cycles a day. And that could be four cycles at night in 90 minute blocks and then a 30 minute cycle, aka nap. So I can actually roll into my nocturnal sleep more prepared, less under pressure. If you change that mindset and just think, when I wake up in the morning, whether I slept at all, doesn't matter how many hours I got, this is how I am. So what I do is I get the light levels up, appetite, hydration, just get everything going again. So I woke up at 4.40 this morning and I cannot seem to get back to sleep. So what I'm gonna do right now is go downstairs and prep some breakfast and then maybe go for a walk. It's not super fun getting up when you still feel tired, but hopefully that'll help relax me and then I can get a 90 minute sleep cycle in before, I, uh, before my day really gets going. One of the things that I find effective in easing the stress of not sleeping well is taking care of another area of my health that I have more control over, my nutrition. And one thing that I found really helpful in getting on top of my nutrition is by using Athletic Greens. And I'm really excited that Athletic Greens has come on board to sponsor today's video because this is a supplement that is a part of my everyday morning routine. And it's been a huge part of me upping my nutrition. Plus they've given us a special promotion that'll be down in the link in the description. Athletic Greens is a comprehensive all-in-one greens powder to optimize your nutritional intake, which gives you 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients with each serving. It's got that antioxidant equivalent to 12 servings of fruits and vegetables that helps to support immunity. It's full of prebiotics and probiotics. I find that it helps me with my energy levels and it's also vegan friendly. Athletic Greens is specially formulated for athletes with all the ingredients being NSF certified for sports. So you can be confident everything you're putting in your body meets the quality and safety standards of the world's top athletes. If you're serious about your diet and you're looking to optimize your nutritional intake, I found that Athletic Greens is an effective tool to getting my nutritional base right at the start of my day and allows me to know I'm getting the vitamins and minerals I need even if I'm stressed, sleep deprived, busy with work or traveling. Athletic Greens has hooked it up for us and is offering Goal Guys viewers 20 free travel packs with your first purchase. 
So you can go and check that out in the link in the description. And yeah, hopefully it becomes a staple for your morning like it has for me. And now back to my sleep journey. <sighs> so for the next 30 minutes, I am prepping myself for sleep. I have set my bedtime for 11 p.m. And the thing about that is I'm going to try to do that every single night of the week, including weekends, which I am not looking forward to. <laughs> um, however, if I do wake up before seven, which would give me five cycles of sleep, if I wake up before that, then I'm just going to get up and I'm going to not stress it and then hopefully try to make up that sleep later in the afternoon. So in the meantime, dim light, no screens, trying to relax. On days when I do sleep all the way through the night, the first thing I do is try to take in as much sunlight as possible first thing in the morning. Opening up the windows and doing morning exercises whenever I can, and this helps me to wake my body up and trigger that this is the start of the day. As the sun rises, it creates serotonin uh, in your pineal gland in your brain, which tells your brain to unsuppress everything and make you active. And then as the second phase of the day going into early evening that starts to create a melatonin hormone and take you towards a place where you could enter a sleep state while nick doesn't recommend tracking your sleep as keeping tabs on our hours can actually increase our stress i decide to log every good day i have to try to give myself a little positive reinforcement whenever things go well so i just finished week two and this week i was actually able to get four nights of seven plus hours of sleep. And the week before, I was only able to get two of those. So this is a huge improvement and I'm actually feeling very, very encouraged right now by this. Now, I wish I could say everything went smoothly from there. Yeah, not quite. After the first two weeks, I realized my finances weren't as stable as I'd hoped and this became a new cause of stress that led to a breakdown in the positive habits I was trying to form. And when our minds become stressed, our health is one of the first things we compromise. Research into college students stressed about exams showed that they were more likely to neglect proper diet, exercise, and sleep while leaning into coping habits like smoking or drinking caffeine or neglecting household chores. For me, those bad habits were an increase in phone time and lots and lots of coffee. Typically, the last thing I do at night is text or FaceTime my girlfriend while other lights in my room are off. I'd been trying before to instead give myself 30 minutes before bed to do reading or journaling and reduce light, but when that stress came back, so did my old habits. What's so challenging about stress is how much it diminishes your self-discipline. And for weeks three and four of this challenge, it effectively sent me back to start. And I eventually had to remind myself of what was so appealing about Nick's book in the first place. The notion of giving yourself the freedom to fail and just figuring out how to mitigate it. So I began getting back into basic mindfulness practices at the start of my day and giving myself a second window to sleep. As I got back to a couple decent nights sleep, I began to get back into good habits. I decided to cut myself off from coffee after 1 p.m. as caffeine typically has a half-life of five hours, which will affect your sleep if you're drinking it too late. Once I got myself back on track with the first couple good habits, I was able to then build on them to improve my sleep routine. I kept the temperature in my bedroom lower than the rest of my home, so there's a quick drop in temperature before bed, and that helps me fall asleep. I also purchased blue light canceling glasses to wear in the evening so I don't throw off my circadian rhythm when I'm looking at screens. And with each small change came another noticeable improvement. See this time? Y'all see this time right here? That my friends is nine hours of sleep for me. That is nine hours for the second time this week which is the craziest thing because I cannot remember the last time I had nine hours of sleep before this so Things are looking up for me, and that feels so good. Mwah! For the final three weeks of this challenge, each week felt like an improvement over the last, leaving me with more energy, less stress, and better attention to spend with the people I care about. My interest is, is how do we get from the point of wake to the next opportunity when we choose or can or want to sleep, and to be able to get a better awareness of the things that can impact on that ability to recover starts you on the road of redefining what you do throughout your 24 hours. 
While I can't say these 60 days cured me of all my sleep problems, what they have done was give me a playbook to manage my sleep habits. And the results of that have been absolutely transformative. Obviously, there are a variety of sleep impairments and difficulties people face, and I know that what worked for me may not work for someone else. But what I can say is investing time and mindfulness into my sleep needs and building those habits that foster better sleep, it really changed my mindset around something that I had always assumed was completely out of my control. And it feels so encouraging to know that now I have some of that control back.